um, structure or best that might just show you a cross section through the plane. Probably the really easiest way of doing it. Okay, so I've just do, I'm just putting a cross section through the plane so you can perfectly see um, some of the structure. So obviously these are these are the skins. Um, the skin narrow to the fuzz is uh, I think I've put that as one mil. Um, just gives some strength. And then as we get into the wing area now, um, you can see it's um, it's about half a mil or 0.75 of a mil. Um, I've also got some webs. Um, I don't know what you call them, spars, I suppose you could call them. Um, then I'll show you. So it's coming down the wing, um, just into the server bay, um, and then on into the tip. And there's some areas here where there's still quite a lot of foam that I could possibly take foam out of, um, but I've just left the foam in there. Um, and also areas at the front here, which are quite dense with foam. Um, but I'm thinking of just leaving them as is. Now if we just switch to another orientation, I'll show you how I've, I'm joining up the wing um, into the fuselage. Okay, that's probably a good. Uh, let me just move that forward a bit. Okay. Okay, I'll start at the very front here. So as we go through, um, the ducting is going to actually be glued in and attached to the wing section. So it's going to um, actually help with some of the strength. And then there's like ribs. There's another rib over here. Uh, there we go. Where the ducting touches again uh, in the wing, wing section. And then if we look at what I've done here. Okay. So the wing. So the wing, will, this grey area is the wing, and the red area is the wing. So obviously I'll build up the wing together like that, and then I'm going to slide it in. I've, I've given it some extra thickness around where it slides in. Um, that's probably a better view there. Um, into the fuselage, and then obviously they'll glue in. Um, and I'm hoping that's going to be enough strength um, in it. Um, there's no spars or anything in there. There's, there's a spar, like a cast spar, which I'll show you in a little bit more detail in a second. But um, I was toying with the idea of putting another rib in just down this area, just to bridge the spar. So the spar carries on through to the other side, um, just as a cast piece. But I'm just second guessing, so I'm going to leave it out. Because um, I don't want to add weight to it you know, for no particular reason. So I'm going to leave it out and see how it feels um, when it's all put together. Because the ducting is actually going to help. Um, the structure as well, so I'm going to have some structure from the ducting, um, some strength in the ducting um, that I hope to tie everything together. Well, that's the plan. Um, now, if we open the wing by itself, okay, here, so the wings would be two, so two sections, um, a sort of two section cast, and then glued together. Um, I need some holes in here just to get my, my leads from my um, servo. Um, but basically, um, what we end up with is um, it's the best way of showing this. Oh. Okay, so I've just done a quick exploded view, so hopefully you can see how see how it goes. So we've got a main rib that runs up, um, and then we've got a servo, um, the well for the servo there. Um, all these panels here, um, sorry, all these these panels here are are going to be about 0 0.75, 0 0.5 millimeters thick. So it's just like a covering, like a solid form of covering. Um, and then obviously when I glue the two together, um, I've got like this massive of spar running down the full length of the wing. And then I've got these these ribs that I've put in. And they're only, literally, they're only about, uh, I think they're about 3mm. Um, and I've just put them in just to stop this this area from panting. I don't want this, I want it to retain its shape when it's flying. Um, and I don't really want it to panting as it were. Um, I don't know whether that's the right term or not, but um, yeah, so there's a bit of there's some ribs in there, and I was going to put similar ribs in the fuselage, but um, the fuselage looks more than strong enough as it is. Um, and these are the areas where the, um, the ducting is going to glue into, so the inlet ducting will glue there and there, and that's going to help sh keep its shape as well. Um, you know, when I was printing the ducting, I was having problems with it losing its shape, so although I won't be printing the ducting, I'll be doing a, a composite duct, a fiberglass duct, um, I can still glue the ducting into these points um, at those points so they, they fit nicely. Um, so that's basically the structure in the wing. 
Um, and the, the, these are the sub areas. Obviously, I think it's quite a lot of farms still in there. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it. Um, it's going to give it just add some extra strength, and the white's quite good at the moment. And the only other place I could take some farm out possibly is um, on the slats, on these leading edge slats. So they're solid at the moment, but I'm, I'm just going to leave them as is um, because um, the, the weight's good and it's going to be a lot of work just for a very, very small gain in, um, in weight saving. So that's basically how the wings going to look. Um, let's do another cross section through as so you can see the section. Um, it looks quite cool. Um, so as we go through, you can see how it, um, um, and yeah, an interesting thing I did was well, when I set up the um, the section, there's I put a I think I can't remember half a half a degree incidence, uh, positive incidence at, at, on the in the center point of the model, as it were, if these wings continue all the way, all the way to the, the, the sort of right plane, the center of the plane, um, and you imagine the uh, profile of the, the cord on there, I gave it a 1% incidence, and then um, I did a wash out to about one degree at the end of the tip, so it actually washes out um, ever so slightly, um, you can just see it there. Um, I didn't base that on any figures, I just did it as a, that feels right, sort of, um, way of doing it. Okay, so okay, so um, I thought I'd just show you how I'm set, I've set up the uh, flying stab. Like I say, the, the, the control horn for it is going to be um, hidden. Um, and basically what I'm doing is I've got two uh, bushes that I'll print. Uh, maybe I have nylon or um, ABS. Um, They'll get. They're actually mould into. I'll actually cast when I cast the um, the side, the fuselage side. Um, so the fuselage fuselage side is going to look something like that. Um, and then I'll have a um, control horn that will be glued into the um, onto the rod. Um, and that, I mean, that's all the, the movement I'm looking at really. Um, probably shows better if I actually open up the um, horizontal stand. Hang on. Okay, so that's a bit better. So, um, let me make it transparent. So, I got a carbon fiber tube that just slides in um, each, each side. Um, so, this is a full length carbon tube, fiber tube. So, what my thinking is I'll glue the horn onto the tube first. Um, this purple bit is the bush that will be um, sort of embedded in the mold. Um, so, it'll be one on this side and one on that side. Um, and then when I put the two fuselage sides together, I'll put push this one in one side and then put the fuselage side through on the other side. Um, and I'll have it connected up obviously on the bench first on that side. And then um, all I have to do is to slide the um, elevators on um, at the end and, and glue them in position, make sure they're level and glue, the, glue them in position. So that's the thinking there. Um, I'm not really sure how that's going to pan out. Um, but yeah, so far it looks, um, I might change it, I don't know. Um, I'm really keen to have this actually inside the model, so there's no linkages on the outside. Um, that would be pretty cool. But like I say, I might shoot myself in the foot with that as well, because I won't be able to get to it once once it's all together without cutting cutting it up. It's not a problem, but anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, so this is going to be like the fuselage uh, assembly. Um, I've put, um, I don't know if you see, I'll just do a half there. Just show you half. Um, so this is like the saddle for the wing to come in. That's going to support the wing, give it a little bit more meat when I glue it in. Um, I've put a rail in here um, for the um, battery tray to rest on. So that's all going to be level. And I'll also put another. I haven't thought about how I'm going to do it, but I need to have the receiver perfectly horizontal um, for the gyros to work correctly, so I'll need to perhaps have another rail. I might do it so this rail top and bottom, so actually slide it in and then lock it lock it in place. And I can just slide it out um, when I, if I need to get to the receiver. Um, this is access for the motor, um, which I haven't actually shown you, but yeah. And then these two pieces, um, 
I don't think I'm going to cast these into the into this part here on the grid. I'll have these as separates, and I'll just glue them in. Um, just make the cast pass a little bit more difficult than need, more complicated than it needs to be. Um, but these then support the exhaust and then the front of the um, inlet um, for the ducting. So that's basically how the structure is. I need to work, do a little bit more work on all this area. Um, but it's, it's very, very close to being uh, complete. Um, yeah, the only thing I need to do with the, the fuselage is sort of some fillets. And I've also had a, put a little bit of extra meat on here. I think it's about three mil now, this face. So the fuselage actual skin thickness is one mil, um, completely one mil, um, where there's no support. And then where I'm joining, I've got a three mil, like a rib, I suppose, like a keel, if you want to call it. Um, running the full area along the area there, um, and then for the cockpit, um, I've had I've got like a bit of a step system there, so I'm hoping like this sort of structure when it goes together is going to actually stop this from squeezing in and out. Um, so we'll see, we'll see once it, I've cast a few and, and have, I can have a look at it, a better look at it. Um, but that's not really hard to change. So we've got the server access there, we've got the motor access there. Um, and the other axis um, there. So that's basically what a fuselage half is going to look like. Um, that I'll hopefully cast. Okay, so um, yeah, the one thing I didn't show you was the access to the um, to the motor um, EDF. I'll just change that. Oops. So um, yeah, the, the wire will come out the bottom and then lead and then go under. Um, this is the exhaust ducting going down that way, and then we have the inlet ducting going this way. And the way that this is going to work um, is we have two mounting points here and here, so I unscrew these two points, um, and then I don't know how I might just attach this with tape. And what I'll do is I'll um, Untape it, and as you can see here, this still sort of fits into there. So this will slide back then, yeah. So I'll slide the whole unit back, so it comes off, so it comes out of this this area here. Um, so I slide it back, and then um, unscrew this bit. I can lift the whole EDF out out the hatch. Well, that's the thinking at the moment. The other thought thought I had would be to have this the whole end come off, and then that way I could just drag the um, EDF out with the um, exhaust uh, attached, so you just drag it all out the back. Um, but I'll still need to get in here to, to fix these points. So um, I'll see how I get on this way, and if this is a hassle, then um, it would be easy enough to, to do a really lightweight fiberglass um, like cowl for the, for the end. Yeah, And then all I do is have a couple of screws or fixings, whatever, here, yeah. and I just slide the whole assembly in and screw it and then just screw it um, here and here. That should lock everything in place. So that's the thinking with the, um, the EDF um, at the moment. So um, at the moment what I'm doing is I'm going to start casting. I've done the um, elevator fly horizontal, horizontal stab um, with that new hinge line and it worked really well. Um, next up will be the, the, the hatches. I'm going to um, start with the small stuff and hopefully learn from that. So I'll do the molds for the hatches um, and cast them and get them out of the way. Um, the whole idea is as I'm going I'm learning better techniques for, for uh, 3D printing and casting etc etc um, and do that and then at the same time I'll start doing the um, fiberglassing, do the fiberglass version of the exhaust and the inlets and I can start then testing um, EDF setups. This file lies on the EDF, EDF setup and the rotor setup. Um, then I'll be onto the wings, I'll do the wings, and then I'll do the uh, fuselage right at the end and um, see how we're going to um, put it all together. Um, so, yeah, still, still a while to go. Um, Originally I was going to put the power lines and stuff, and I know I can do the power lines, but I'm just really keen to get something out there, get something flying, um, and the power lines would be a big investment in time. Um, but it's, it's something I can come back to and do at a later date, and then just reprint the moulds for it. 
Um, so I'm not really too worried about that. I'll, I'll probably do the power lines for the undercarriage, um, nose undercarriage and the undercarriage on the wings. Um, and anything else that's really um, unique to the Hunter. Um, I need to put the pods on here, the cannon, the cannon pods um, on still. Um, I can do that, I'm going to do those at a later date. But at the moment I'm really keen just to get something flying. And then um, I can take it from there. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.